I had the greatest job in the world, and that's working with dogs. Best in show winner is the French Bulldog. Winston won the National Dog Show. It was amazing, it was exciting. And to have a dog to be number one dog in this country, you have to have great nutrition. And I always fed Pro Plan, just like us. When we eat well, we feel good. And I just love that food and what it's done all these years to all the dogs I bred and all the dogs I've shown. Welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and I'm super excited, you guys. I am being joined by two very good friends of mine. Sandra Pratari Hickson and Ryan Horvath are the co-show chairs for the Harvest Moon Classic. Many of you know this is Del Val Dog Club of Livermore and Skyline Dog Fanciers of San Mateo County. All down, if you're an old school person like me, it's Del Val. <laughs> we, we have new showgrounds and this year... Very excited to say that the Harvest Moon Classic is going to feature one of the eight regional standalone National Owner Handled Series events. So this is pretty cool. It's a big deal that um, we can have this in our area. It's one of the first ones that's going to happen later this year. So welcome, guys. I think it's going to be really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. So talk to me about, this is all kind of a, 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 a new event, right? Like this is a, we're trying this out. Isn't that where this stands? This isn't a necessarily for sure, but we're going to give it a shot. Is that where we are with these? Yes. I mean, as far as, as far as we know, I mean, mm -hmm. AKC as will do what AKC <laughs> would like to do, but you know, this is, this is a new event and we're trying it out. Yes. Excellent. And I really love the concept because it's coming from the perspective of really elevating the owner handlers, right? And so I judge, you guys judge, I see a lot of really actually very, very good dogs in the owner handle groups yeah. uh, that I judge. And so I think, I think it's really cool that AKC is putting this effort out. What... What made, like you guys had to apply for this. What, what made you decide you wanted to do it? We've, we've yeah. applied um, for this once the announcement came out. We thought, oh, this would be great to add. Um, on top of that, we've always made an effort as a club to honor the owner handler. And since the inception of the owner handler competition, we've um, included it in our shows every year. and we've also recognized the need to elevate it to a, a status on par with um, with the rest of the show. So we've offered similar trophies. We have the event taking place, you know, right in the main hall with um, the, the rest of the show so that, you know, you can kind of go pick and choose what you want to watch, um, who you want to cheer for, um, you know, and make sure that you can make all your ring times because, you know, it can get a little hairy sometimes it, it does. Uh, trying to make your connections. <laughs> it does. Um, and so talk to me because this is, as I understand it and tell me if I'm misunderstanding it for you guys, but my understanding of this is it's a standalone. So it's not necessarily happening the same day as the other dog shows. So talk to me, th talk through the scheduling, how you guys have decided to pull, pull this off. So it is happening on Saturday on the same day as okay. the regular dog show, but it okay. is a standalone event. So we're not offering the traditional owner handler that day. And we have rings um, dedicated both indoor and outdoor to just owner handlers. Um, and we actually have brought in judges just for this. And um, if, we don't know what kind of entry we're going to get. We don't know what's going to happen, right? So it's all very fluid at this point. And we have talked about all the things we could do. Um, you know, we, we, we at the moment are planning to have it in the same building as, and, and Best in Show definitely will be in the same building, um, but we're planning to have it in the same building that all our other indoor um, uh, breeds take place and, and same with outdoor we have the ability to rent another building if we have to. Okay. Yeah. So um, we've thought it through as best as we can think it through at this point, you know, and, and then it, of yeah. course, 
you know, you're going to get thrown curveballs. So, <laughs> well, I mean, that's and it's I, challenging that's being one of the first clubs to put this right. on. You know, you trying know? to invent it from the ground up, and you know. Um, we are in a new site that we've, you know, had two years in and we continue to evolve and develop, you know, new things that we need to, you know, improve each year. So this is one more thing that we have to integrate in and kind of start out without anyone to look at and see how they do it. Well, this is I'm sure I'm everybody will learn from our mistakes. So <laughs> mm -hmm. no, this is why I had you guys on because I know you and I know you are up to the task. <laughs> it's not our first rodeo though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, exactly. So definitely not your first rodeo. So talk to me about this new fairgrounds, because I can remember going to Del Val to Harvest Moon Classic back in the day when I was still showing dogs and, and threatening Betty Ann to bring a horse next time. <laughs> it was so far apart and you weren't allowed to have a golf cart of your own. You had to ride a bicycle, which I cannot do. Just you know, tiny well, tip about me. You know, as you know, our the, the fairgrounds at Alameda, right. you know, the costs went through the roof and, and we just, you know, we, we were barely making it there anyway. Needless to say, we could not absorb what they were um, uh, planning on increasing it to. So we found the um, Sonoma County Fairgrounds in Santa Rosa. Okay. And um, this will be our third year there. Needless to say, the first year we had some bumps and bruises and, and things, but we, we worked it out. Everybody, I have to say, everybody was really happy. Um, everything's more, you know, obviously it's not a million miles apart. Um, we wish we had a skosh more room. Well, everybody wants a skosh more room, right? But overall it's working out great and it's not so spread out like the old grounds. Um, and everybody's happy. The vendors are happy. The outside people are happy. We have, you know, um, enough area that the specialties still feel like it's special and it's a specialty. And then we have a nice, um, large indoor building for our indoor breeds and the group. Um, and again, the ability to um, rent additional buildings if needed. So, right. okay. you know, we hope we get to that point, to be honest. <laughs> and we have ample, ample space indoors and outdoors um, Correct. Um, to expand. And, you know, so there is space for everybody. There's room to expand if needed. But, um, you know, people are pleased to have spaces that work best for their dogs, whether it's indoors or outdoors, mm -hmm. and yet it's still close enough to walk to. You don't need, um, you know, the horse, a carriage, a plane, and a helicopter to drop you in, because um, yes, that was uh, quite a challenge at Del Val. <laughs> I would never come with more than five dogs. Like I, that's it. Like I can't do it. I just can't. <laughs> And we also we still have agility, and we have um, fast cat. Um, and occasionally barn hunt, some, sometimes scent work. Um, this year we're going to have the ATT test, CGC, and trick dog. So, you know, there's other stuff going on as well. Right. And indoor right. obedience and rally, and everyone loves that it's indoors on fully matted rings. They have their own private section that's nice and quiet. And from and what it, we hear it, from our obedience chairs, there, um, the entries continue to increase and people love it. Yeah. Yeah, the obedience people are very specific about they want what they want. And I understand <laughs> yeah, that. Man. Like I appreciate it. I respect yeah. it. But they can't always have it. So when they can, I mean, I think that's just like amazing. And we've always yeah. offered it and we plan to continue offering and we find it a, a very um, you know, vital inclusion in the sport, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to continue to offer those uh, events. Think about how many people that I talk to on this podcast that got their entire start that are now ultra famous dog show judges, mm -hmm. breeders, what have you, they got their very first start because they took their, their family pet German shepherd mm -hmm. or whatever it was yep. to obedience yep. class. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I personally think that's huge. So, okay. So very cool. So let's walk through how this um, NOHS event will work. So you are not offering NOHS in the regular classes that day because you cannot. So this is its own. And so will it start with breed judging in each of the breeds, right? Yes. Well, they'll probably be staggered throughout. So we'll have dedicated rings, but there won't be like, you know, a group, you know, a ring for each group. So okay. they'll, they'll move along uh, concurrently mm -hmm. um, with the, all breed show, but there'll be like uh, two rings, typically one inside, one out, mm -hmm. um, where the breed judging um, will take place. Um, and then we're planning to do the groups um, in the rings that we do the owner handler groups in, in the same main building. 
sure, sure. Um, that afternoon. So, so for those on our hand, and just I'm, I'm not, I, I'm asking because I'm trying to get it right in my head. So I'm hoping you guys are smarter than I am. So <clears throat> those people that are competing in that event are going to show twice that day. They're going to show in the breed for their regular breed for championship points for what have you to go to the regular variety group. And they're going to show in the uh, National Honor Handled Series breed and groups similar, like how they do it in Orlando, right? If, if they enter both, they don't have okay. to enter both. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah. No championship <laughs> points on offer in the owner handled competition. Same like how Correct. they do it in Orlando. Mm-hmm. Yep. Correct. It does look like, though, for the owner handler regional competitions, that the points that they would receive for their owner handler um, rankings are going to be double, I believe. Double. Yeah. That's from what, what I read. I so um, that's quite yeah. an incentive. And to have eight opportunities, should right. you uh, choose to take all of them, right. uh, can really move up the ranks there. Absolutely. And so the show runs, the whole show runs Thursday to Sunday, or, and you've got specialties on Wednesday. Is that still correct? No, it's just Thursday through Sunday. And okay. there's specialties. So October there's yeah, there's a 17th few 17th to the 20th. Okay. Right. There's a few concurrent obviously concurrent specialties and a lot of designated. Right. Right, right, right. Including right, right. um the bearded collie uh national. national this year as well. That's a big feather, you guys. Beardy national. Yes, we have to to give them yeah. a shout out. We're thrilled yes, to have yeah. them. Yes. And we're actively, you know, working out to make sure that, um, you know, they have their space and all their events that they want with their national. They also host one of the agility trials that are with our shows each year, one of the local beardy clubs. Oh, perfect. Um, so it'll be great to have, um, you know, have them as well. Um, and what's um, uh, even more exciting is we've secured, a, you know, a Purina Pro Plan sponsorship this year. Nice. Um, and I believe the, the Bearded Collie Club of America is sponsored by them as well. So it's... Um, uh, yeah going to be lots of Purina around. I love it. Well, here we great. are. Purina's here on the podcast, supporting the podcast. So we're all about Terrific. it. Terrific. Love it. Good. Love it. True Panion is revolutionizing medical insurance for pets by providing the best possible experience to our members. And it's not some space age dream. It's happening now. We pay your veterinarian directly while you're checking out. And we're the only ones who can, which means you have decisions in seconds and you don't have to wait for reimbursement. So unlike with other providers, you'll keep more money in your pocket. Ask your veterinarian if Trupanion can pay them directly. Because there's pet insurance, and then there's Trupanion. I'm Laura Reeves, the host of Pure Dog Talk, and I'm coming today to talk to you about Brilliant Pad. And it is amazing and an incredible way for me to do my potty training with the puppies and not ever have to touch any yucky stuff. Brilliant Pad literally rolls the mess up and you never touch it. So I really wanted to talk to you guys about that, share with you the experience I had with it. It's like the most amazing thing you've ever seen. I tell everyone the story, Betty Ann dragged me to being a judge, kicking and screaming. And my very <laughs> first judging assignment was at Harvestman Classic. I and, remember. Remember, yes. yes. And we have, <laughs> you guys still have Ridgebacks and Pugs and just in, uh, Whippets and just like huge numbers of supported entries, designated specialties, that kind of thing. We, we do. Have a large we... Entry. They've, they've, some of the breeds have shifted. So we've, you know, yeah. unfortunately lost yeah. some. We've also um, gratefully taken some on. And, and some. Um, yeah, and, and many others have. Um, you know, been faithfully, um, you know, holding on with us and we do um, everything we can to accommodate, you know, each and every club that, you know, chooses to, to support us. There are many options that clubs have and, you know, we're thrilled to, to be able to work with them and, um, you know, offer a space. Very cool. Talk to me about one of my favorite things about your show. Are you, is, is this year again, you're going to have Heidi draw the cover art is that still happening yeah she's done it already and it's up oh. on our facebook page and our website so yeah yeah and, and so so here's me throwing it out there i'm just saying maybe she could get to to draw the best in show winner for the um regional owner handled event too 
Okay. <laughs> we may have to take that under advisement. <laughs> <laughs> There's Laura throwing down at you. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the record now. <laughs> I know, right? I do, I do love her work. So that was like, but what if she did that? That'd be so cool. <laughs> it's terrific. It really is, you know, coming into the um into the main building. You know, it's it's got a curved roof and we have oh, um, cool. you know, pipe and drape coming yeah. down and we have um all the banners uh throughout the length mm -hmm. of the um mm -hmm. uh the main hall and it's you know it's really like her you know it's her her it's own all our uh, covers. Personal exhibit. It's all our covers. It know? is. It's like a museum of her work and all of it is amazing and I mean, I haven't been down since you moved to the new venue, but I just, I used to love that to go in and just be in that ring where the best in show was held and just kind of watch that mm -hmm. whole parade of covers that you guys have been doing for what, 15, 20 Oh my years. gosh. At, um, let me see. I make sure they get, I make sure they get hung up and I put them in order. 1997 or eight was oh, the yeah. first one. Yeah. It's yeah, even longer so, than I thought. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. That's yeah, there's so cool. there's many. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. And so you Ryan, you mentioned earlier, and I think this is really important because I, you know, I, I have a lot of owner handlers that uh, are podcast listeners and all that sort of thing. And one of the things that I see pretty consistently is folks that feel like, you know, owner handlers, here you see your flat ribbon go away. Right. And, and, and so I want you to talk a little bit more about that parody that you guys, and I've seen it, I having, having shown and judged there that you guys offer your owner handlers. Well, you know, one of the things that we try to pay attention to and something we've definitely done for um, this regional event is to have judges that are approved for these groups. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have judges who judge them, know the breeds and, um, you know, we've, you know, and many times we've had them on our panels doing, you know, similar breeds and groups in the past. So we're thrilled to be able to, um, you know, provide them with, you know, an equal stake, you know, and, and like you see, there are some times where even, even some of the judges are like, I don't feel really comfortable, even though I can judge that group, I've never really, you know, I don't really feel comfortable with it. And it really is a disservice to, um, you know, to the exhibitors. Mm -hmm. And while it's, you know, it's a great, you know, training ground in essence for a judge, um, you know, it's, it's still, ultimately, it's it's not the the best experience that, an, you know, an owner handler could have, especially if they're out showing every weekend, you know, on their own and, mm -hmm. you know, start to know like, hey, did that, you know, did that sit right or not? You know, it's, you know, right. we've all kind of been there where we see judging and we think, oh, maybe they kind of missed the mark there. <laughs> Right. And we're trying to avoid that as much as possible and not saying that all approved judges will hit the mark every time, but, it, yeah. but we're think, wanting to give them a fair shake. <laughs> I, I think that's a great, I think that's actually a really great thing that this special event can offer that you can't always, you know, you can't always have exactly. a fully group approved judge to no, judge you can't. your own hand. Like most average dog shows just can't do that. And so they hire somebody like me and I can judge a couple breeds in the hound group or a few breeds in the working group. And I can judge that group and I have a reasonable sense, but I'm certainly mm -hmm. not, you know, I'm not Ryan in the, in the hound group. I'm not Sandra in the carrier group, <laughs> no. right? Like I'm not. And so I do believe that for this showcase, I think that is such a big deal and it, and it's not inexpensive for you guys to do that. No, nothing's inexpensive at dog shows anymore. <laughs> so well, no, I, I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just, I really want listeners to hear. Yeah. That, you know what I'm saying? That, that no, we have tried to go above and beyond, uh, above and beyond trying to find, you know, we want, we want judges judging this that are approved for that group. And so we have done that. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's where we also want to offer, you know, I mean, even some of the more fun stuff, you know, being able to offer, you know, rings that are on par with, you know, mm -hmm. um, the, the rest of the show so that they don't feel like you're kind of like, you know, go sit in the corner, um, go do your that's thing, you know, at some table. weird time. Yeah. <laughs> and we offer prizes and, and trophies and ribbons that are, you know, um, uh, equal to the rest mm -hmm. of the show. And we've done that for years now. Yep. Um, you know, it is, it's meaningful to, to win at shows. And, you know, when you have a regional event, that you can win at, you know, you want to sit at home with, you know, and, you know, many times as an owner handler, you have just, you know, a, you know, one or a few dogs, you don't have mm -hmm. a kennel of dogs and litters every year that you can pick from, you know, and have all your awards lined up. So yeah. it's very meaningful. And, you know, 
um, it's nice to be able to offer that. And we've actually, you know, had people who have won awards at our show in the past come up and thank us specifically mm-hmm. for the the equal recognition and representation that that we afford them. The same size ribbon, you know, mm-hmm. the same pro, you know, best in show prize. So, you know, yeah. And so, I'm Laura. Like- no, go ahead, Sandra. <laughs> uh, I I want to ask you a question. You you said that um, you know some people were um, not pleased that this was happening. They had so I haven't heard that. I, um, and so I you know me, I'm always just kind of yeah scanning, mm-hmm. right? And, and <laughs> so the, the concerns that I've heard, no points on offer, which I think you guys have solved. By offering it on a day, you know, instead of having come in a day early and not be able to get championship points, right? They're they're getting they're doing the owner handled regional event on mm-hmm. the same day, and so they're able to get points and show in owner handled, mm-hmm. which I think addresses one of those issues. Um, and so I love that. And I think one of the other concerns I heard is, okay, now I have to pay for owner handler, right, or the owner handled event which when you just check the box, you don't. So those were two of the ones that I saw, like, I don't want to come in an extra day early and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I mean, to be honest, I think that the, the world is full of people who would um, complain if they were hung with a silk rope, but um, that's just me. <laughs> um, okay, and I, I really do think that you guys have done, have just really hit the mark and checked all the boxes to make this as amazing an event as it can be. And I know a lot of people who are going to be very excited to come down to it. We're we're excited to host it. We're hoping that we can, you know, meet people's needs. And, you know, we've always been open um, and receptive to feedback Mm -hmm. and we implement things as we can, um, you know, to make the event each year, um, you know, a little bit more elevated, a little bit, you know, more enjoyable for everybody, including ourselves. Um, you know, it's a lot of work. We're out there for a full week, you know, putting this on, um, you know, it's, it no, it's no small <laughs> task. And yeah, and, yeah. And by the end when, you know, everyone's, you know, ready to be Scatters done. Scatters like out cockroaches. There still. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you were trained by the best very early on in the podcast. I, and I will link it for listeners. I interviewed Betty Ann about this dog show and and some of the work that has been done on it and i talked to her and i talked to kim meredith and a bunch of people about putting on these giant events Mm -hmm. just so that people can have an appreciation of the amount of dedication that you guys put into these events and it's not your average backyard weekend dog show it is an event and Mm -hmm. so to me i just think it is the perfect honor that you guys are going to have this owner handled regional event um, for out here because it's, it's a big deal and you guys are a class act where it will be showcased appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I think. We hope so. (laughs) It is. We've been, we've been um, groomed. We've been groomed and, and trained to, you know, put on these events that have so many moving parts, mm-hmm. you know, both Sandra and I have, you know, worked closely with, um, you know, Betty Ann Stenmark to get this um, to where it is. And, you know, with all the, the moves, the hurdles, the bumps, and to combine these two clubs, you know, both Skyline and Del Val, mm-hmm. you know, Del Val has kind of been on its own for a long time out in Pleasanton. And, you know, there became a time where it, you know, it needed another show on and, and, you know, poor Skyline, who was, you know, also started by Roy and Betty and Stenmark, was kind of, um, you know, floundering at the time. And we were, you know, finding our homes. And, you know, we, we had to leave out of the San Mateo County grounds. We found ourselves on um, the first two years um, starting with stock with Contra Costa County Kennel Club and did that before we said, hey, all the members are pretty much the same. Um, we're going to combine forces and just do this here once. <laughs> And, and we're thrilled with what it's evolved into. And I think what's also helped is that many of our members are um, also, you know, active judges. And it gives us an opportunity to travel around the country and see how other shows do what they do best and learn from them and hear from exhibitors throughout the country about what works, what doesn't work. So we can try and implement all of those um, to put on what we hope is, you know, a, you know, an elevated event. Wow. 
I, from my perspective, you succeed. Sandra, I'm glad you came back. I thought maybe you were being kidnapped. <laughs> no, I, I had a dog <laughs> scratching at the door. So I had to, I had to, I had to go make her go away. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> As I said, it's a dog podcast. It's all good. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> all right, you guys. I, I am super excited to watch you roll this out. I have ultimate confidence and faith in you. And I appreciate you coming on and, and talking to the listeners and letting them know what they can look forward to this fall. Thank Thanks. You for we hope to us. see everyone. We hope to see yeah. everyone. Uh, Santa Rosa County Fairgrounds, October 17th to the 20th of this year. There you go. Nailed it. And Ryan even managed to just get that in there. Like, I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great professional, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Thanks again. You guys. All right. Thanks, Laura. Bye.